We are at the final week. Crunch time. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to show you the final workflow. All right. So we have our character sculpted. We have retopologized that character either in Maya or in ZBrush. We have transferred our details from our high poly to our low poly. And then we have textured it in Substance Painter. All right, so that's where we are right now. Okay, so we've gone through sculpting, breaking it down, baking our maps, and texturing it, and now we're ready to send this all to Maya and to use in RenderMan or any other rendering program, right? Like V-Ray is really complicated, so I'd be wary of that one. Um, Arnold seems very uh, simple, and I'm going to show you how to use RenderMan. So um, let's get to it, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is um, press Control-Shift-E, right? And so what this is going to do is it's going to send all my maps to my specified folder, right? So if I go to my folder, I'm not gonna bake these maps again, so, because I just really don't want to, and it's not necessary, all right? So these are all my maps, all right? Bat blades, everything's titled, right? Everything looks nice. I know exactly what everything is, right? So we're good. Okay, and these, what are these? I guess these are after ones. I guess we'll figure what those are later. Okay. So, um, we just press export and it'll export all of our maps. Make sure all this is at 4096 and make sure you're using TIFF or EXR, right? EXR is automatically 32 F bits, but I, I don't know. I just like TIFF. You know, it's not, there's no scientific reason I'm using either one. I just like saying TIFF better than EXR. It's what it comes down to, all right? Very simple man. So here we go. Uh, so you press export, all your maps baked. Uh, again, 4096, TIFF or EXR, 32. And uh, also, if you're exporting out just for Arnold, you can go here and do config. To config. And you can press Arnold, and what it will do is it will take all your maps, no matter how you painted it in any way, and export it out for Arnold, right? So if you use Arnold, you can do that, but we're just going to go with the base ones, which is basically everything that we've used plus normal and AO, right? No alpha, because we don't need an alpha for right now. Okay, so here we go. We exported it. We are going to Maya. All right, so this is my file all right, for uh, that Batman that we have, okay? So I want to go through this Maya file a bit, okay? So usually what I have is I have a camera, and I have these two on, right? This one's going to show me where the edge of the image is, right? And that one's just going to visually reinforce that, okay? So... um Next thing, all right, is that I'm going to, after I got the camera angle that I'm looking for, right, um, then I'll go here, right, so let's say, you know, I get my money shot, right, I like calling him that, all right, so I'll just do this right here, enough to show a little bit of his face and all of his body, right, nice dynamic image okay so after i have my camera set up what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here to one view and create camera from view right the shortcut is control shift c if you want to do that um and it'll create this camera but you can see i can still move it right but i don't want to do that right i want to keep my camera locked so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press this icon right here right under view and it's going to select my camera for me okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channel box. I'm going to click all of these, right? Click and drag, right click, and then I'm going to lock selected, right? So now, no matter what I do, I can't zoom in and out. I can't do any of that shit, right? Next thing we're going to do.
right, is we're going to set up some lights. So um, this is my perspective camera, I think. All right, so now I'm just in my working camera, right? So now we're going to take a look at this scene. All right, so that was my camera. Okay. So I have a few lights here, okay? And I also have some fog, but we're not going to... We're not going to deal with that, okay? We're not going to deal with that. So um, let's talk about this pose, okay? You can see there's a center of gravity, right? So it doesn't look like he's going too far off or it looks like he's off balance, right? So what I did to ensure that was make sure my hips are right above my heel, right? Because if you got that, then you'll never be looking like you're falling back, okay? Also, uh, things I did for this is I put myself in this position, okay? I did my pose, and I took a picture, right? And um, it felt what it was like, and it's very important for you to put yourself in that type of situation. You need to know your art, okay? So if you can, um, put yourself in that pose, get someone to take a picture of you, and... Trust me, your pose will look so much better than just ad-libbing it from your mind, okay? Trust me on this, okay? Because posing is very important for your final image, okay? So, um, so we got that. Let's talk more about this, okay? One hand closed, one hand open, right? Now, he's in a karate pose, right? So I don't know which class I was in, but this is the only time that your front leg and the same arm will be leading, right? Okay. But you can take a look at the feet. They're both not out straight, right? One's going this way. One's going that way. You have one arm going this way, one arm going that way, right? You have the neck really far out, right? The body's curved. Right? And everywhere that we look at this, it's dynamic, right? So whenever you're posing, make sure you look all the way around your character, okay? Make sure it looks good from every single angle because that's what 3D is, right? 2D is you can draw it once and you're good, but whenever you're doing 3D, you have to draw it a million times, right? You have to draw it from every single angle. So make sure you're posing is nice and tight okay let's talk about the assets that i did in here all right so you know how i was saying you can pose the character take it to zbrush and then finalize the um details all right so let's take a look at this what is that it's a decimated decimated character right look at all that all right you can give me this for your final one okay this isn't a problem it's going to keep all your detail. And then when you put the normal on top of this, right? Because this is just a ZBrush sculpt. And then we'll take a look at the um, final applet. Um, get my art station on. I'm pretty sure you all have seen this one because I am very proud of it. All right. So you can see these. this object is smooth, right? There's no surface detail. There's wrinkles and stuff like that. But there's no... Um, mesh, right? So, <clears throat> and so we look here and you can see that he's got a lot of uh, surface detail, right? And that's because of all the maps that we got from Substance. Okay. We use these in conjunction with, uh, with the two, okay? So, um, so what I did is I posed the character in Maya, right? I got this pose. And then I sent it back to ZBrush, okay? And uh, let's see, ZBrush, where are you? ZB, ZB, Z, where are you? So here we are in ZBrush, right? A nice clean model. Not a lot of stuff going on. Not a lot of surface detail, right? All this stuff that you see. It's pretty much a decimation of that character of this uh, this mesh. Okay. So uh, what I did is took this in here and um, and sculpted it and 
emphasize the muscles that were being used, right? They're being flexed. So whenever I, again, putting yourself in the pose will give you that insight. So you can, you know, put yourself in the karate pose and you can feel how tense your legs are and that your legs are totally activated and so are your hamstrings and so are your glutes, right? And then whenever you, um, you know, put your hands in that way and just put yourself in this position, it just becomes really clear what muscles you really need to emphasize, right? So we can take a look at it and you have your standard you know, muscles, but what's really, really flexing are these, right? I have defined these way more than I have defined any of the other muscles, right? Right here. Right? And everything else are just pretty much shapes. But since he's using his legs a lot, I put a lot of emphasis there, okay? Um, also, uh, after I posed him, I couldn't use symmetry anymore, right? So that's where stuff starts coming alive. Whenever you start um, uh, going off of symmetry and just putting in these little touches, right? So it's not the same on the left and the right. Like his lips are different. You can see his uh, the details of his face are different, right? It's not the same. Okay. So if you want to add some life into your uh, final character, please do that. Okay. Go off of symmetry and um, and really really hit these um, these asymmetrical details. Okay, all right. So let's look at our decimation um, options. Okay, uh, decimation master. Now, right here you have keep UVs. All right, make sure you do this before you decimate anything. Okay, so press keep UVs, then preprocess, then decimate then send it to Maya, all right? Um, so just want to make sure, make sure that's clear, all right? Z plugin, decimation master, keep UVs, pre-process pre current, decimate current. So, um, so then I send it back here, all right? So that's where we are now. All right? We are uh, sculpted, decimated, and we send it back. ZBrush, again, if it's Z-Model, I didn't decimate it, right? Didn't decimate it, didn't decimate it, okay? Okay, so here we are. So let's start assigning our materials. Okay, so I'm gonna select this head. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna assign new material. I'm gonna go to Legacy Materials under Renderman. And I'm gonna go to Pixar Disney. Okay, so what that's gonna do is go over here. Okay, so, so it should be a blue ball, right? And it should say Pixar Disney one at top, up top. Now please, when you go into your career, make sure your naming conventions are clear and precise, okay? So this is Batman, this is his head, and I'm creating his material, right? So Batman head map. Also, just to be thorough, so we don't have Pixar Disney 1 SG to describe this, I'm just going to copy this, paste it right here, take out Matt, and it's an SG. SG is for your shader group, right? Shading group sample. SG, SG, okay? Make sure you press enter or it won't take, okay? So we'll go back here. I'm going to go to my base color. I'm going to click uh, this checker, and I'm going to go to File. And then it's going to create this over here, right? My attribute editor, image name, right? Here, just to make it easier, you do not have to do this, all right? But I like to, because I like to be thorough. So I'm going to click ZBrush, right? Zero base ZBrush. It says no tiles found because I haven't added anything, okay? So I'm going to go here, go to where this is, right? That man. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so I go to substance and Batman. Okay, so I'm gonna find that face, as I guess is what I called it. So base color, right? Okay, 
So I think what's happening is I have too many programs open. So I'm going to close Substance. Because we're done with that. Okay, that's good. I have two versions of Maya open. Don't need that. And we're done with ZBrush as well. Okay. Hopefully that'll free it up. Okay, so... Um, so now uh, we put in our base color, right? And it's going to have this black box and you're not going to be able to do anything with it, okay? So that's fine. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my emit color because on my eyes, for Batman, they emit light, okay? So I'm going to go to file, click this, go here to bat face and emissive, right? So now that's plugged in there, zero base ZBrush, and click this icon and now we're back here. So now I'm going to go to metallic, go there, click this, go to metallic, ZBrush, and go to the next one. Okay. So I'm going to go to my roughness, file, here, roughness, right here, right? ZBrush. Same thing over and over again, right? So we don't have anything else left besides the normal. And file here. That's normal, right? So there we go. Okay, C brush. Get over. And generally, the bump maps are really, really high. <clears throat> So I'm put it at 0 0.01 and make sure I change it to a tangent or uh, just regular bump. Because um, out of substance, it'll it'll automatically read it. So um, now I'm going to select here and then I'm going to give it an IPR. And so what it's going to do right here, it's converting all our textures to work within RenderMan. So... Um, that's what it's doing. It's converting our 4K textures to other 4K textures and then re-uploading them and then configuring them and then rendering them. So give them a, give them a moment and, uh, and it will get there. All right. So we're taking a look at this and obviously you, I think we have a little bit of a problem. I think that these lights aren't working, right? You know, this would be a good... Good way to just teach lighting, all right? So this was all on purpose. This is divine spirit intervening right now, okay? So uh, make sure you turn your IPR off, right? Because we just wanted to test it. So we're going to discard that, okay? So um, let's create some lights, all right? So we have all these sun things, and I bet you these are lights. I'm just taking a guess. I'm just looking at the sun and just assuming it's gender... All right, so uh, let's go to this just plain one. Um, and there's a Pixar rectangle light. Okay, so let's create that one. Um, and let's press W. And let's move it over here. Move it up there. And increase the size of this, right? And kind of get it in the same place. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get um, my backlight, All right? We'll just put that right there. And I'm gonna click this one because I have a nice color on it. All right, so this color, again, we can take a look at this. It's obviously just not white, right? It's slightly green. And the reason I want that is because green and blue means danger or caution. Okay. So, um, grab that. Okay. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to my color and I'm going to grab that swatch. So, um, your intensity let me see, or your exposure, I'm sorry, your exposure um, put that at 14, right? And let's just take another IPR. 
So make sure you click the right window, right? Uh, I'm going to check my render settings really quickly. Make sure my IPR isn't too high. IPR samples. Yeah, we're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to press the IPR again and let's take a look. See if this light's working. And it is, it is, it is, it is, it's so beautiful. All right, so this is how easy Render Man is. One effing light. And it's already looking badass. Look at that, dude. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe I'm just biased because it's Batman. I'm pretty sure it's what it is. Okay. So the exposure is a little bit too much, so I'm going to cut it down by half. Take a look at it, and that's much better, right? Not so strong, right? That's what we're looking for, right? Right, okay? So that's something that we can do, okay? So I got my backlight, and uh, we can tell that, you know, it's good enough to rough in, right? I don't need to dial this in right now, all right? So I'm gonna discard that. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another rectangle light. Gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna bring it up there. I'm gonna increase its size so I can see the damn thing. All right. Now the shape of this light does affect the shape that it uh, puts out, right? So that make sure it's around the same. Yeah. Make sure it's tilted the same. Raise it up. That's what we do. We raise that shit up. All right. So um, this one also has a color on it. All right. So swatch. All right. Like that. All right. So now I'm gonna put that here, right here, and just get it. And you can see it's just off. Right. It's pretty much probably not even noticeable on your screen, but that slight blue tint makes a difference, right? We don't want to go huge into the blue to where it just overcrowds it, right? So what do I have it at? 0 0.095. That's what I have it at, okay? So we got that. We're gonna kick the exposure up to 14. That was pretty strong last time. Make sure we're in the right window and click our IPR. Very, very strong. Very strong. Too strong. Right. Got that there, right? So we need to select our light. Back to our IPR. And dial this mofo down. Right? So seven. Look at that. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. right. So, man, every time I render this thing, like, I don't know. I think, I think, yeah. I really, really love it. Okay. That's just so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. So beautiful. All of it. I'm sorry. I'm still recording, aren't I? Okay, so uh so we have our back light, our front light, and now I'm gonna get my side light, right? So what are we gonna do, F? What are we gonna do? Hmm? What's the first thing we're gonna do? We're gonna shut down our IPR. I uh, got you on that one. That was you weren't expecting that one. You're like, oh, I've been listening. I'm gonna do rectangle light. No, no, no. We gotta shut down the IPR first, bro. All right? Because we don't need it anymore. So then we're gonna right click it, create another rectangular light. Makes it kind of big, a little bit, and move it kind of into place. And I'm, um, am I lucky? Yes, because I've already done this scene, so I don't have to do any of this experimentation. I'm pretty sure you can configure your lights somewhat to this and have a pretty good render just because I think I'm awesome. 
So, you know, if you copy me, I'll be like, oh, man, that, that just looks so good. Just looks, oh, my God, oh, no, just looks so pro-level. So, <laughs> so uh, you can do that if you want. But, again, you know, each situation is different. Okay, so let's take a look at this light configuration. What color is this? Again, I got my blue. Oh, oops, sorry. That's my front one. Is that my front one? No, that's it. All right. So this one has a little bit more of a warm color. All right. I don't want it to be too um, too warm. All right. So probably kick it back a little bit. Let's dial it back. Okay. Uh, and then grab this swatch. And we got it. We already got the swatch. So delete that. And go to our new light. Pick the color. Click that swatch. We're good. We're going to kick this to like seven. And then we are going to click the right window. And we are going to IPR it. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Just joking. Just joking. All right. Let's chill out. All right. So now we've got our front light, our back light, and our side light. Okay. So now this one, this is the accent light. Okay, uh, let's make sure we don't have any other ones. Okay, yeah, so this is my final light that I put in this scene. The reason I did this is because um, without it, let's take a look at the render. You can see how the hand just disappears into the darkness, right? Over here, it's a nice contrast, you know, it's all right. What I want to do is I want to pull this, um, this arm out from the background, right? So this is um, things that that you definitely got to think about and plan for, right? So uh, we don't need our IPR anymore because we know what our next problem is. And discard that. Okay. So let's take a look at this light and exposure. It's green. Super green. Okay. So let's, what are we going to do, F? That's right. We're going to create a Pixar rectangular light. You're getting there, you're getting there, Ev. You're getting there. All right, so, um, put this in the right spot. And as easy as this looks, like I'm doing, trust me, this took me three days to get the lighting just right, okay? No, I'm just joking, but it didn't take me three days. I know you are like, oh shit, man. No, it didn't take me three days. Uh, it took me about a day to get it done. But what I did, and what I suggest all of you do, is find someone who's better than you and ask them their opinion. Hey, what do you think about this? Do you think this looks cool? If not, why not? Yeah. All right, so that thing I just did, I just switched the orientation of the um, watch caller. Um, of my orientation, of my move and trans translate and all that stuff. Uh, so what I did is I double clicked it, and then I went here to object, and you can choose object world or whatever, right? I use object or world most of the time. All right, so um, close that out. Okay, so let's look at our old one. Uh, it was just color, so we can delete that. Okay, so we go here, get that, choose that color, and then we're gonna kick this up to about 3.5. Okay, go into the right window and IPR it. Oh, look at that! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it looks so good! It looks so good! Oh my god, it looks so good! Okay. So, we have done our IPR render, right? But we haven't done our final render. Right? 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 Okay. So, what we are going to do is we're going to set up our final render. Because now we got our lights. We're pretty cool with this. We can take it into the camera raw filter and really pull out a lot of this information and color tone it and all that, you know, so this is afterwards after rendering it for about six hours, 
right? I got this image and then I pulled it. And all this stuff, you see these god rays, that's fake. All this smoke, you know, I did. You can go online, it'll literally take you 20 minutes to learn how to do fog like this. So, you know, do it. Um, these god rays were just a Photoshop effect, just blur, directional blur with a bunch of strokes. Um, and that's it, right? So let's set up our final render. We're going to go to our render settings, okay? So the one that we want to pay attention to, and well, that's probably not much help, okay? Uh, we want um, open the EXR or TIFF. It's up to you, right? I like TIFF. Um, we are going to choose which camera, right? So that's my money shot three. This is what this camera is called. Okay. Uh, custom. What is my width and height, right? I want 1080 by 1920 and then I can crop it any way that I want. What resolution do I want? I want max resolution. If I had a computer I could trust to render for 16 hours just so I could have a 750 bit resolution image. That would be great. But um, I'm just going to stick to 300. Okay. Sampling. This is the next thing. Look how huge these are. All right. 1800. That means I'm going to have 41 billion. 41 billion pixels. Okay. This is OCD overkill. That's what this is. All right. You can go 1800. You can get away with 900. All right. Anywhere in the billions. If you get close to the billions, you're good. All right. So um, make sure you're, you know, your total. And you can see all this indirect information that I'm doing. All right. Your Russian roulette. Um, this is... Uh, it's a. Uh, it says at the bottom a method of probabl probabilistically terminating a ray path. Decreasing this setting will lead to shorter paths and faster renders, but will resort result in more noise. Right. So I kicked it up about halfway. You can kick it up all the way. It's up to you. Okay. Indirect clamping two ten. All right. Default ray paths five and five. Filter nothing. Gaussian two and two. Uh, features, uh, denoise, you can turn this on with a frame if you want. I had it off. Uh, type, you get from camera, modifier, motion blur. We're not animating, so we don't need that. Um, here are all my outputs, right? My color, diffuse, specular, and emission. Right? I think that should be standard. If they're not, then you can go here and, um, select these, right? So I can select, uh, this one and then press this button and it'll send it over. Okay. So if you don't have these four RGBA, diffuse, specular, and emission, right? IPE, IPE, then you can find them in here and you can uh, add them over. But I think it should be standard. Okay. Uh, advanced, let's see, bucket size, let's Z threshold, all this stuff should be standard. I don't think I did anything special and nothing on the workspace, right? So make sure you set up all your um, all your stuff to that, okay? Make sure you have a nice... Um, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be this width and height. You know, you can change that. I have mine in a vertical position. You might have yours in a horizontal position. In that case, it would be 1920 by 1080. So it's, it's up to you, right? Math all up to you. So in our final render, what we'll do is we'll just click this button. Right, and it's gonna. This is where it's a real deal, holy field. All right, and so it's gonna do a really nice render. This render is gonna take about four hours. All right, so I'm not gonna do it for you right here, but you can see my render works. There's nothing wrong with it. You shouldn't have a problem with that either. If you do have a problem with it, you need to contact me because so I'm here. I'll be here for you know, I'll be here Friday, two to six. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, I won't be in the class uh, Monday through Friday next week, uh, or Monday through Thursday, I'm sorry, because Friday, uh, you should have already turned in your stuff, right? So all images, assets, right, your beauty render, all that stuff needs to be done 
Thursday at midnight and no later. Okay. So, um, hopefully this has helped you. Um, if you have any questions again, just give me a call. It is more than my pleasure to serve. Okay. Thanks for watching guys. And I will see you in class.